just one more service information, the same one. Before you leave, if you are not coming back tomorrow, please leave your beacons over there by the exit. I have the pleasure of announcing our last speaker for today. Deepu is here with us, so he, uh, he will be presenting for the next 35 minutes. If you'd like, guys, please stick around after the hours so we can, you know, hang around a little bit. And, of course, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, welcome, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining. Uh, okay. So, oh, I'm missing the love. I had, like, a... So, weird. Okay, Google Docs. Uh, so we are, today we are going to see how uh, uh, a company, my company ZBL Labs, used uh, JHipster to build its uh, DevOps product. Uh, before that, uh, a little bit about uh, myself. Uh, so I'm Deepu K. Shashidharan. Uh, I'm the co-lead of uh, JHipster. Uh, I also work for uh, ZBL Labs as a senior uh, product developer. I'm an OSS uh, aficionado and uh, an author and a speaker. You can find me on social media at these uh, IDs. Uh, this is my book, if you're interested. Uh, has anyone heard about ZBL Labs? You work for it, so you don't count. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, we are a company based out of uh, Netherlands, uh, US now. Uh, we build uh, DevOps uh, software. So we have a release orchestration uh, uh, tool. It's called Excel Release. Uh, it's a full lifecycle release orchestration tool. You can plan, code, build, test, release, operate, everything. And we have a deployment automation tool called Excel Deploy. It, you can automate deployment to literally anything. It's, uh, uh, platform agnostic tool. You can uh, deploy to cloud, web servers, mobile, whatever, whatever you wish for. Right? Have you used uh, JHipster or have you heard about JHipster? Nice. So uh, quickly, I only have 35 minutes, so I'm going to go quick. So uh, a little bit of about JHipster. It's the most popular uh, uh, RAD platform in Java. Uh, we crossed 1.3 million installations. Uh, we have 20k app generation per month, 250k plus users. Blah, 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 all those things. So uh, what can you do with uh, JHipster? So you can obviously generate uh, monolithic and microservice applications. Uh, you can generate uh, domain models, uh, entities. You can create uh, CACD pipelines uh, with all the uh, HIP tools. You can deploy to different cloud infrastructure. You can deploy to different container uh, uh, tools. So. Uh, before I go into what, how, what we did with JHipster, I'd like to show a little bit of what you can do the, uh, to showcase. Um, let us create a microservice uh, e-commerce application and deploy it to a uh, platform. Right? So we'll be creating this today. So you can see we have a gateway, and we have three microservices. We have a service registry, and we have monitoring based on ELK. So we'll be doing all this in the next 10 minutes. So as you can see, they all have their own databases, like the gateway has an SQL database. Uh, two of the microservices have, uh, again, MySQL databases, and one has a MongoDB database. And of course, ELK has uh, Elasticsearch on it. The registry uses Git as a storage. You can also use file system as a storage. How long would you think it will take for for to create that entire thing. Sorry? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so we'll be uh, doing this with uh, JDL today. So JDL is uh, JHipster's uh, domain language, or the DSL, we call it. So these are some of the references. So the JDL that I'm going to use today can be found at the uh, Google link there. And uh, these are the references. So let's take a look what we are going to do. So we'll be creating applications and the entity model using JDL. So this is how a JDL application looks like. So as you can see, uh, the, the first one is the uh, definition for our gateway. So you have a base name, application type, package name. We use uh, Eureka service discovery, uh, JWT authentication, MySQL, Hasselcast for cache, and Gradle as build tool, React for the front end. 
SaaS and Protractor for testing. And for the microservice, this is one of the microservice. You can see it's similar, but we don't have some of the options like client framework, SaaS, or test frameworks here. It's simpler. It has uh, similar service discovery authentication and everything. It has a database uh, definition as well. So let's look at the entire. Uh, is it visible enough? Uh, yeah, so this is the store. We have a product microservice. We have an invoice microservice. We have notification microservice. As you can see, compared to the invoice microservice, notification has a few more things because it uses a MongoDB as a database. It doesn't have a cache. Uh, it doesn't have a Hibernate cache as well because MongoDB, we don't use Hibernate, so we don't need those things. It's quite uh, straightforward. And entity and relationships. So this is how a typical entity uh, and relationship looks like. So you have a product, product order, and you have, you have some enums defined. So these are quite straightforward, right? They, you define the, the, the attribute, its type. If you have any validations, you define that after that. Then you have the relationships where you say, uh, typical JPA uh, relationships. Then you also have a few options, like if you need a service uh, 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 you know, for your uh, entities, like a service class or a service implementation, if you need pagination or not. And uh, most important is when you're defining entities for microservice, you have, to def you have to specify which microservice those entities belong to. That is the last line. Uh, how do you get uh, rid of this? Yeah, that's the last line. So let's look at the entire thing. So, so we have a customer uh, entity, uh, product, product category, product order, order item, and we have relationships for those. Then we have an invoice, invoice, shipment, relationships, and notification, finally. As you can see, in the uh, app definitions, you see something like, like this here. We say that this particular application uses all the entities, because this is a gateway. So in, in jhipster applications, the gateway is normally your entry point. That means it has all the front end. So even if you have an entity in a microservice, you create the front end in the gateway, because you want your microservices to, to be just rust endpoints, right? You don't want any front end stuff there. So you create, put everything here. And uh, jhipster is smart enough to know that this is a gateway which uses some entities from microservice. So it only creates the front end for that. It doesn't recreate any unwanted backend stuff for those entities, which has a microservice related to it. That is what the microservice keyword was earlier. And in the uh, other entity, other applications, we just define what are the entities that belong to them. So this is the whole uh, JDL. I'm going really fast here. So let's make a new folder. So heapcon. Heapcon app, right? So I'm going to uh, download this to my workspace temp uh, heapcon app. So jhipster, I'm just going to call it app.jdl, app.jdl, right? I'm done. Is it visible enough? Uh, guys at the back? Right? OK. So now uh, you can start your timer if you want to see how long it takes. <laughs> right? So now it's the magic from jhipster. So it's a single command. So it's jhipster import jdl app dot jdl. And it's generating all your applications. It's going to uh, uh, download NPM modules as applicable for all your applications. So while this is happening, uh, let me open up another tab here. And uh, cd heap con app. So let's see what we have. Uh, so you can see the invoice microservice being created. We have all the source tests and everything there, all required Gradle builds for that. 
Uh, you have the notification microservice here, all the required uh, uh, configurations for that. You can even see uh, uh, Docker uh, files being generated for all your options, whatever you use for MongoDB and et cetera. Uh, the product microservice, and finally the store, which is our gateway. And for the store, you can also see the front end stuff, which is not available in the microservices. You can see here, the microservices doesn't have any front end related stuff. So it's only in the store. So these are all the applications that were uh, uh, generated. And we are still running not modules, downloading the internet as always. So let's go back to our presentation. Where do you want this to be deployed? So I can do either Docker Compose or Kubernetes. So Docker Compose, can I see a show of hands? Who prefer to go in Docker Compose? OK, Kubernetes. OK, Kubernetes wins, clearly. Uh, I expected that, so I prepared both. Uh, still not ready, but we can go in and uh, create our Kubernetes configuration. So let's create a folder. In the same directory, let's call it uh, Kubernetes and run jhipster Kubernetes. It's again going to ask you a few quest uh, questions. So clearly a microservice. Oops. Uh, um, it, uh, all the applications are located in the uh, uh, folder above, so I'm going to go with the same. And select all the services that we are going to generate and deploy. So all, all of them, of course. And do you want a monitoring? Yes, I want monitoring based on ELK. I'm going to, do you want clustering for MongoDB? Nope, I'm going to keep it simple because it takes more time to start up for multiple instances. You can do that if you want. Uh, password for your registry, I'm going to go with the default admin. Kubernetes namespace, I'm going to go with uh, jhipster. And uh, Docker repository name, I'm going to go push to my private, uh, my, my Docker Hub account. And yes, it's going to be Docker push. You can also specify if you have a private repository or GCR or ACR or whatever, you can also specify the path in the repository name and custom push commands if you want. Uh, Istio, you can also do Istio if you like, but we're not going to do because we have our own registry. So I'm going to skip that. I'm going to get a load balancer for all my uh, services. And done, voila. So it also instructs you on what you have to do next to do the actual deployment. So let's get started. Let's do the deployment. So our uh, generation is complete. All, all our apps are completely generated. All not modules and everything is ready for deployment. So let's run our docker build command on each of the applications. So let's cd into store our gateway, uh, run it, and uh, Let's cd into invoice, run it. Uh, cd into notifications, run it. And uh, what did I miss? What did I miss? Product, yes. So. Uh, this is going to build uh, our uh, Gradle images, uh, sorry, Docker images. And next, we have to push our Docker images. So let's, uh, this is for our invoice. So where is our invoice? Invoice, invoice. OK, still being built, so we have to wait. Uh, in the meantime, we can prepare our uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster. Um, Oops, nope, nope, where is it? Yes, here. Uh, you know how long it takes to create a Kubernetes cluster and a, a Google uh, Cloud project, because I'm going to deploy to Google Cloud. Uh, so I already uh, created a Kubernetes cluster called Hello jhipster. As you can see, there is uh, no workloads on the cluster yet. So it's empty, it's just a, uh, cluster which is already created because it normally takes at least 10 15 minutes to create that and we don't have that much time so i'm going to just uh, use that uh, cluster so invoice is ready and i'm going to push it now i can also do that for say notification it's also ready push 
product, product, where's my product? Yes. Paste. Yes. And finally, our store. As you can see, the store takes a bit more of time because it all has all the front end stuff. So it's doing a Webpack build, it's uh, doing the Docker build, and all. And the image is, of course, bigger than uh, the microservices because they're heavier because of the front end and all those uh, uh, Zul stuff there. Yeah, it's done. So push. While well, these are being pushed, uh, let's 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 create some. Okay, let's go into the Kubernetes folder. I think we have done all this part. So now, since I already created a, 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 a cluster, I don't have to do the uh, G Cloud uh, uh, create a cluster step, which takes a long time. So I have already that. So I can directly do the kubectl part. But before that, let me show you what is generated for kubectl. So you can see it generated manifest uh, for everything and even a handy SH file to apply everything in the order. So there is a namespace YML. Uh, you can see uh, uh, everything required for the registry, the config maps, the registry service itself, uh, uh, ELK, uh, uh, the console, which is the Kibana dashboard, and uh, uh, sorry, uh, Elasticsearch, a log stash, Zipkin, everything manifest for the uh, uh, MySQL DB for the invoice, its deployment service, everything. Same for notification, which is which has MongoDB, of course, product and everything. So I'm sorry that I, I, I would really love to show everything in detail, but we only have 35 minutes, so I can only show an, old, uh, an overview. And if you like what you see, you can always go in and you know, go into uh, the JHipster project and you can try all this out. And you can, you can of course, try. this is, uh, I believe this is really easy for you to try. You just need to do an NPM install uh, hyphen G uh, generator jhipster. You download this sample that I showed. You run the command. You get everything. You just go go play around. No. Okay, let's see. Uh, images are still being pushed. I think the network is a bit... Uh, Congested, maybe. So uh, to save time, I'm going to go through my slides to finish some slides before I proceed with this. OK. Uh, while we are waiting for that. So um, uh, Zibia Labs has a new product called Excel Impact. So this is where we try to do our DevOps intelligence analytics. It's an analytics uh, project with some big data and machine learning stuff. So. It was generated using J, uh, some of some parts of it was with jhipster. That is what I'm going to show. So it, it's based basically a goal-based DevOps uh, uh, KPI. Oops, I'm book. Twenty minutes almost. Uh, goal-based uh, DevOps KPIs and uh, data-driven uh, recommendations and decision support. We are working on predictive analytics and stuff like that. So this is supposed to be uh, your DevOps pipeline, or, or, or this is supposed to be analytics for your DevOps pipeline, where you can make decisions based on uh, what you're doing wrong or like what you're doing right, and then like improve your DevOps pipeline, stuff like that. So if you're already on, this is not uh, tied to the uh, ZBL Labs platform. This is supposed to be generic. So whatever kind of DevOps you're doing, this is supposed to help you. And uh, this is the uh, architecture that we have. So as you can see, we have a lot of uh, what we call crawlers or plugins. So these are small services that connects to uh, different systems and crawl data. So it can connect to uh, Jira, GitHub, uh, Excel release, Bitbucket, Jenkins, blah, 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 all, all these things. So these are uh, current available plugins that we have. And then it sends all this crawl data into uh, integration gateway using either Rust endpoints or gRPC. And this integration gateway is built using jhipster. It's a jhipster microservice. And you also have a UI, which you can access via Excel release, which is, again, a jhipster application, like a gateway, jhipster gateway application, which handles the UI. And we have some data processing with Spark. It's on demand. So we create on demand Spark clusters and process the data, and it dies off. So whenever there is some data coming in, like in, in bunch, we create a, a Spark cluster, we process it, then we kill it off. Uh, we also use a message queue, uh, key value storage. We have MySQL for our uh, client gateway for the relational uh, database. Uh, key value storage is all for the crawl data and stuff. Message queue, of course, to manage everything together, to communicate within, uh, between the applications. And uh, of course, it has to be secure because it's an enterprise software. So we use a key management uh, system for that as well. And the entire thing is running on Kubernetes. 
So we, we, we deploy everything to Kubernetes. Uh, some of the things are uh, uh, Google Cloud services, like Google services, like say, for example, uh, Google key, key Value Store. And then we also use Google Stack Driver to monitor our infrastructure. So this is the architecture that we have. Uh, go into the pipeline, but let me see if my images are still being pushed. Okay. 52 MB, 63. We're almost there, almost there. So I'm going to continue with this one. And uh, how do we uh, release this? So we have a, a single tenant model. We don't have a multi tenant model because we uh, we deploy one instance of this entire architecture per customer, uh, obviously for security reasons and for uh, enterprise compliances and you know uh, stuff like that. So that means we have a issue that as our customer base grow, the the the, the, the number of uh, environments and infrastructure that we have to manage also grows. So deploying uh, everything to each of these environments is going to be tricky. And we have a, a GitHub-like workflow because whenever we commit something to master, we release. So we have like a continuous uh, uh, release. So we have proper CACD. So when you, when you want to release something, whenever you commit, you really have to have uh, orchestrator. And of course, we, we have an orchestration tool, so obviously we will use that. And we use Excel release for that, and this is how our pipeline looks like. So we have a build and test uh, phase where everything is built, in uh, Docker images are built, uh, all the crawlers, plugins, uh, and everything is built into Docker images. Then we deploy that to a test environment. We take screenshots before the deployment, screenshots after the deployment, and automatically compare them to see if there is any discrepancy and all those fancy stuff. And of course, the deployment happens using Excel deploy, obviously, because we build that. Uh, so Excel release orchestra orchestrates the deployment to all the uh, uh, crawlers, which goes into uh, some, some, some are uh, uh, on-premise, some are in the cloud. So it takes care of all that things. It takes care of deploying everything to the cloud, like, sorry, uh, everything to Kubernetes cl uh, clusters. Then, once this is successful, we also deploy to OpenShift, which is our internal network, because we support both on-premise and cloud versions. So on, uh, OpenShift is our on-premise version, so we deploy to that also as a testing phase. And when that is complete, we deploy to our internal environment, which is used by our company, which is like an internal production kind of thing for us. And then finally, when all these stages pass, it automatically deploys to all the production environments. So this is like a, this is like a for loop kind of thing. So for each customer, it creates a deployment step and it does the deployment. So all this is automated. So whenever we commit something to master, this pipeline is automatically triggered and everything happens automatically end to end. The only place where we have to manually intervene is if in the screenshotting phase, if there is a discrepancy between before and after, then this stops there and we get an email to act upon. So we go in check what is a discrepancy. If it is an acceptable discrepancy due to a change, we proceed, else we look into what, is it, what, is, what, what the issue is, obviously. And at this, uh, once the customer deployment is complete, uh, it gets all the git, git mes uh, commit messages, it creates release notes and sends out the release notes. So everything is automated, the entire pipeline. Okay, so this is what we do. And uh, here you can see we use jhipster for the most important uh, parts. Uh, next, we will see how it helped us. Yes, yay. We have pushed. Let's, let's, let's. So, kubectl apply.sh. How long would it take? So, you can see it's creating uh, namespace, config maps, registry secrets, all the services, stateful sets, jobs, everything. So. You can see there's a lot. Of course, it's a microservice. What would, what would you expect? There's a lot. So let's see. Watch kubectl get pods jhipster. So they're coming up, coming up, coming up. It's going to take a few minutes, I guess, at least. So I'm going to optimize time. Yes, 35 minutes is really not enough to do all this. <laughs> uh, OK, how jhipster helped us? Of course, quick, quick uh, bootstrap. So we really started on day one. So we defined our entities. We defined uh, what basic architecture we need. We discussed. We agreed on the architecture. And boom, we generated the base, the API gateway, and the client app. 
done. So in one week, we had working, deployable, production-ready gateway and a, a client app ready to do whatever we want. And fast POC, that means you can create something. You don't like it, OK, throw away. Create something new, throw away. Create something new, throw away. You can keep repeating that. There is no uh, uh, cost involved in creating and throwing away. So that is your POC phase. If you're doing it manually, you spend time to create something, yeah, you throw away, you are wasting that time. Here, you maximum, you might waste like five or 10 minutes that you took for generating that. So really fast POCing and like playing around with different technology. Do you want Kafka? Okay, create something in Kafka, try it out. Okay, you don't like it, throw away. Do you want Elasticsearch? Create, try out. Okay, you don't like, throw it out. All you can, we, we switched from my, uh, Postgres, MySQL, so we kept switching back from one and this DB to the other to try out and stuff. So this was all possible because you can do it with JHSTOR very easily. You don't have to worry about spending time to rewrite your code or anything. JHSTOR does that for you. And out of the box, in, box integrations, you didn't have to figure out how to make certain technologies work uh, together. Uh, there is out of the box integration uh, from, uh, with Hasselcast, Gradle, Spring Boot, Elasticsearch, uh, Kubernetes. And the good part is most of these integrations were done by the respective uh, 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 OSS communities, like Hasselcast was from the Hasselcast uh, uh, community. The, their, uh, some of their uh, leading developers did the integration. Kubernetes integration was done by Rate Sang. He's like a leading Kubernetes uh, committer. So similarly, uh, most of the technologies had uh, direct support from those uh, communities, which is very good because then you know that you are getting the best that you could get for those integrations. Best practices, everything, right? So that is there, the best practices from the start. So and JDL entities. So because you can uh, uh, model everything using JDL and try out different uh, uh, relationships and everything so easily. So you try out an entity schema, you generate everything, you, see, you, you work with it and you see, okay, this doesn't work, okay, you change. You just change and you regenerate everything. So you, you didn't have to go through the manual steps of doing everything by hand. So that really it saves a lot of time. So the most important is the amount of time that you save in order to start. So yeah, and also the amount of the, the things that you learn, like even if you don't want to use it directly, you can generate something, you can see how it works. Okay, how, how, how are these two working together? How is React uh, uh, talking to the backend and how is the security handled? You can look at that and you can implement that in your own applications. So there is also a lot of learning uh, from these because there is, it, this is a collective uh, 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 wisdom going into uh, JHipster, right? And uh, challenges. So some, yeah, of course, every, every, regardless of what uh, tools you use, you always have challenges. There is always challenges in IT, right? We also had challenges. So some of the challenges we faced were, this is not JHS related challenges, this is general, but some of them were also from that, say for example, Hasselcast. The Hasselcast uh, cache clustering uh, by default was using JHS registry. But in our product, we decided not to use the registry, uh, but to use native Kubernetes discovery. So Hasselcast uh, cache clustering was not working with Kubernetes, so that was an issue. Elasticsearch write performance. We were doing a lot of re-indexing uh, while data processing. So write performance was a huge issue for us. Kafka sync issues. We started with Kafka as a queue, and there was a lot of issues uh, uh, with that. And on-demand uh, Spark clusters on Kubernetes. No, this is not something normally people uh, do, I guess, uh, or something we couldn't find normally people doing. So this was really a challenge for us, on-demand uh, Spark clusters on Kubernetes. And of course, orchestration of all this for multi multiple uh, customers as a single tenant architecture. That was a huge issue. And uh, ES high availability on Kubernetes, the, because there was no dynamic volume resizing when we were building this. Of course, I think it's a feature added now, but when we were doing this, it was not there. So these were the issues that we faced. So before I go into how we solve this, let me see if the pods are up. Yay, awesome. Let's go back, let's go back. Where's my browser? Yes. So let's, uh, before that, let's, let's see our services. So kubectl uh, get services. OK, so you can see there are two external IPs for our services. That means these are the only two uh, uh, services that we can access from outside. So let's uh, look at our uh, store app, which is, our, of course, our gateway, right? That is your gateway into the application, which runs on port 8080 by default. You can, of course, change the port when you define the application. I didn't change it. I went with the default. Yes, so here's a gateway, right? Let's log in. Default is admin admin. I didn't change it, so. Nope. You're logged in. 
you can see all the entities here from all the microservices. So, so as you saw, the entities were defined in the microservices, right? So the front end for all the entities were generated in the gateway, and now you can access them from here. Let's, let's uh, try something, right? Let's create a product category. So uh, heapcon. Oops, something is wrong. Hystrix timeout. OK, I have no idea why, why that is. Let's try. Maybe some service is not properly up. OK, that seems to be a weird error, but this seems to work fine. OK, I need to look into what happened there, but later, no time now. Notification service. Let's create a notification service. Uh, entry. Uh, user ID should be a number. Okay, one, two, triple one. Seems fine, and you can see that this is a MongoDB UID. So it, because it has a MongoDB database, right? But whereas this has a normal ID because it has a MySQL uh, uh, database, so you can have a normal uh, uh, long ID, right? Uh, some of the administration page, you can see the gateway page. You can see all your services that are being forwarded to. So you have the re JHipster registry here, notification, invoice, and product, right? And user management screens, metrics, health, configuration, audits, and logs. Uh, the normally there, there's uh, so if you deploy with the Swagger profile, you can also see the Swagger endpoints here. So I didn't deploy with the uh, uh, Swagger profile enabled. And uh, you can also normally have translations for more than 35 languages by default enabled. I didn't enable them, so the default is English and Fr French. And you have the account-related options here. So now let's look at our next uh, item. So I have a few more minutes. So this is a JHipster console. And it runs at port 5601, if I'm not wrong. And yes, so you can see the Kibana dashboard. Actually, you can also uh, look into the registry because the registry is cool, uh, cool because from the registry, you can look at the uh, health uh, configuration uh, metrics, uh, uh, Swagger API docs, and everything for all the applications from the registry. But the registry is by default not exposed, as you can see. It runs in a headless mode because it is the registry is clustered. You get two registries for fail safe. They are clustered together and they run in headless. Of course, you can create another Kubernetes service with a load balancer to access that. I don't have enough time to show that, but it's fairly easy. I even wrote a few blog posts where those are described. You can also see it in the JHIPS documentation how to do that. It's a Kubernetes thing. Like you do a kubectl uh, uh, service uh, uh, up for this one with a new name. Uh, and uh, type load balancer, and voila, you get an IP, then you go to the IP, you can access it. That's it. So no, nothing fancy there. So this is a Kibana uh, dashboard. Oh, uh, something is not right here. kubectl. OK, everything seems fine here, but I don't see any logs here. And without logs, we won't be see, able to see any dashboard. Uh, OK, guys, something went wrong there, which is very usual when you do the conference presentations. This worked perfectly fine when I tried out, because as any conference presenter, I try out before to not make a fool out of myself. But like el every conference presenter, when you actually do it, it doesn't work, and you end up be making a fool out of yourself. Normally works. I have to look into why everything is fine here. Normally, when it doesn't work, you can see something having a crash loop or like an error here. Services, everything fine. So that means yeah, I have to go into the logs and see what happens. We don't have time for that. So let's keep it. Let, let's say it works normally most of the times. Of course, sometimes it doesn't. Then you look like a fool. How did we solve our issues? OK, I'm overshooting maybe by one minute. Is that OK? OK, how did we uh, solve our issues? For Hasselcast uh, cache clustering, of course, you will use the Kubernetes discovery API. You write your own uh, 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 custom uh, endpoint mapping and stuff like that. It works. So there is even a Kubernetes plugin to do that for Hasselcast. We used that, did some modifications, some tweaking, and made it work. For Elasticsearch write performance, uh, we figured out there is not actually much that you can do, except for 
changing to SSD, increasing a lot of memory, and swearing a lot at Kubernetes, sorry, at Elasticsearch, at ourselves, and everyone we see. And for Kafka reliability issues, we tried, but then we decided to move to Google Pops Up because it was more stable and uh, it, it, it fitted our needs. So we didn't really spend a lot of time trying to figure out why the Kafka setup was not working pro as it should be. Uh, for on-demand Spark clusters, we ended up creating some uh, uh, slightly modified uh, uh, images of Spark for our, our needs and uh, with a lot of tweaks, of course, which kind of ends up creating new uh, you know, uh, containers on demand, runs everything, then dies when things are done. So it's like a lot of tweaks and band-aid kind of things. And for, of course, for orchestration, the solution was very easy. Just use Excel release and Excel deploy together. That was the easy part. And for ES high, avail high availability, we still haven't implemented that. Of course, there is a, now there is an option to resize dynamic volumes, but we haven't done that yet. Probably we'll do that. So yes, uh, and I finished. One minute about time. So uh, sorry that I put too much stuff into this, but uh, 35 minutes is really not enough to show off the normally uh, JF's representations I do at least for 50 minutes or like three hours normally because you can show things in detail, go through everything. But yeah, I had to fit. So uh, thank you for sitting in. And if you have any questions, you can find me outside, probably at the AG04 booth somewhere near. You can find me there, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And again, thanks a lot. All right. Thank you for staying with us. So this officially closes the day one on this blue stage. So I will see you here back tomorrow. And uh, have a nice evening. Bye.